So back in the mid-90s, there was this whole thing where if someone made a first-person shooter game, the game magazines would call it a Doom clone. Everything's a Doom clone. Heretic's a Doom clone. Strife is a Doom clone. Hexen's a Doom clone. Old Man John down the road's a freaking Doom clone. It was a weird thing. I mean, do we call platformers Mario clones? Look, Brian May, the guitarist from Queen, said it best. We learn by imitating other people. When you're a baby, you try to walk and talk because that's what your parents do. By that logic, you're a clone of your mother. Originality is a lie. Hell, Undertale's just a better Earthbound. With all that said, there's a difference between inspiration and just plain copying somebody. And then there's copying somebody just to prove that you're able to. To prove a point. To show you can do it too. And I think that's where Alien Breed 3D sits at. Team 17 was a British game development company based out of Wakefield, England. To start out, they mostly made Amiga games. They're most well known for their game series Worms. I got worms. It's a good ass game, and they still make worms to this day. But before that, they had a game called Alien Breed. It's a top down shooter for Amiga and MS DOS and had a lot in common with Gauntlet. It's also a pretty good game and got a few sequels. In 1995, the FPS fever was blazing hot on the PC, and between Doom's release in 93 and then, a ton of big name games had come out System Shock, Doom 2, Blake Stone, Marathon, Rise of the Triad, Heretic, and Super Noah's Ark 3D. By 95, Amiga was dead and the PC reigned supreme. But companies still made games for it, including Team 17. And they looked at what everyone else was doing with FPSs and said, hey, we can do that. And so they surprised Amiga owners with one of the first FPS games on the Amiga and CD32, Alien Breed 3D. When it came out, the Amiga magazines gave it rave reviews and gave them kudos for showing that the Amiga could do FPS games too. But despite the positive reception, the game only sold 5,000 units. Why? because nobody had Amigas anymore. The PC Master Race had won the computer wars, so nobody really got to play this game. What's more is you really needed to have your Amiga upgraded with some faster RAM to play it, because the frame rate would be pretty low if you didn't, and you'd have to cut down some of the graphics. And if you had the CD32, you just had to deal with the low frames. And honestly, look at this. Is this any way to play an FPS game with a small-ass viewing window and a HUD that takes up 90% of the screen? You could turn the HUD off, but all it did was zoom into the window. It didn't increase the resolution at all, so it's literally like I did this in post. Looks like 16-bit barf. But all that said, it's still freaking amazing that this could run on an Amiga at all. It makes for an impressive tech demo, and believe it or not, this game does two things that Doom couldn't do at the time. Transparent water you can swim in, and platforms and floors above other ones. Doom couldn't do that yet. But don't worry, because this is not how we're going to play the game. In 2020, 20, some wonderful individual took it upon themselves to port the entirety of Alien Breed 3D to GZ Doom in a total conversion called Project Osiris. So now we can experience the game on PC with modern controls, mouse aiming, and a full screen. So now we can experience this game in a way Team 17 never would have dreamed of. So strap yourself in, get your Xenomorph flashlight ready, while we go through all 16 levels of Alien Breed 3D. Now before we start, we have to talk about this guy. His face is cracking me up. Duh! Also, his head looks a little misshapen somehow. Maybe that's why he's screaming. So this game has a story, though not important. It adds a little flavor to the game. What it amounts to is secret project going on at an alien planet. They're apparently breeding aliens. That's the name. And they get loose and kill everybody but you, Captain John Reynolds. So now you're a permanent guest at all the 16 alien maps, and they dare you to fight them if you can. Level 1, the gate. The base looms dead and silent in front of me, blotting out the sky. The main entrance is out of the question, choked in rubble and bodies. Not all of them human. Oh my fucking god. Time for me to kick the ass of some motherfucking motherfucking aliens, pee pee poo poo. So they start you out with a pulse rifle, which honestly isn't that bad. You'll end up using it a lot to take care of the smaller enemies. This is one of those games where every weapon has its purpose. You will find though that it's kind of easy to run out of ammo? There's not much ammo in the game. Just enough to get you by. Oh, that's just straight up a doom switch. Well, it wouldn't be a boom shoot unless you were looking for key cards. Mother key cards. What's even better is instead of three, most levels have four. I love the little screech sound the aliens make when you kill them. 
There isn't much going on in level one. It's pretty short. There's a swimming pool. There's hit scanners in the walls. They are in your walls. At the end of the level, it tells you how many enemies you killed, how many secrets you found, and how long it took you. I just use it as a reminder I suck at video games. Level two, the storage bay. The storage bay has got this weird hallway with these arrow-shaped rooms. I don't know what's up with that. And this is where I start running out of ammo and have to resort to the knife. The original game didn't have the knife. It was cut content. Ah, oh, jeez. I just made a pun. Knife. Cut. Content. So when you ran out of ammo, you were fucked. You get the shotgun on this level, and it's a double-action pump barrel. I mean a double-barrel pump action. Makes no sense but I'll roll with it. Say hello to the caco demon of this game, the Beholder. He's got several eyes and four assholes. Man, I bet taking a shit looks awkward for him. They can take a few hits too. Normally four shotgun blasts will take him out if all your pellets land. Don't even try to kill him with a pulse rifle. You'll waste all your ammo. I love how there's a lot of dark rooms in this game. Kind of adds to the spooky factor. You'll come to a door in the storage bay that doesn't come all the way up and then you have to crouch under it. This is like one of the three times you'll ever have to to crouch in this game. And immediately after that, the game gives you a grenade launcher. It's only the second level and you already have one of the best weapons in the game. It one shots the red guys in the hit scanners and it'll take out a beholder in two or three shots. Now here's something else the game throws at you. It does that quake thing where you have to activate a bunch of switches to open one door. I guess they show you that that early just to show, hey, this is a thing in the game you're gonna have to do. At least you don't have to do them in some kind of weird order or some shit. Like go from one end of the map to the the other in a specific order and do the hokey pokey. Level three, the sewer network. The game is now done holding your hand and it symbolizes this by making you go straight into the poo poo water and in the poo poo water is a plasma gun. You're gonna get very familiar with the plasma gun because next is a room slam full of hit scanners. It can take down the hit scanners in two shots or maybe it's one shot. I don't know. I just keep shooting till they're dead. It's faster than the shotgun and better than the pulse rifle. But being a projectile weapon, the auto aim on it is kind of iffy. Looking back, I wonder if I should have turned the auto aim off. Some of the enemies also have plasma guns too, and they'll drain you pretty quick, especially if there's more than one. It's so easy to lose a lot of health in this game. I went through a big chunk of this map with one health. One thing I did find out though, is the pulse rifle is really nice for when you want to shoot enemies from really far away. Also, this game likes to put enemies right on the corners. You'll just be walking through here and then suddenly behind you is a hit scanner taking your health Away. But I got real good at that shit too. I got to where I would get in a corner and snipe bad guys from afar. They don't call me Grassy Knoll for nothing. You kind of have to when you're real low on health. There's not that many health packs in this game. And this version of the game actually has more than the original Amiga version did. But you know what? You running around with little to no health and you're running out of ammo constantly? That's not an isolated thing. That's this whole game. You're steadily begging for more supplies of any kind. And it gets to where you try to make every Every bullet count. Even most of the pickups don't actually give you all that much ammo. Look, it has only given me four bullets. Think of this game like a car that gets bad gas mileage and you're steadily low on gas. Anyway, you swim in the poo water for a little while and your reward for doing that is three beholders at the end of the hallway. And this is where you learn your plasma gun ain't worth shit against a beholder. For one thing, they float around so much you can't get the auto aim to work right. So you're better off with the shotgun or the grenade launcher. Or you could die, that works too. Now the exit door is right there. I could just run past them and just run through the exit door, but no, they thought of that. You have to hit two switches first before the door will open. Ha, huh, there, you see? That's how this game is gonna treat you from now on. At least this level is straightforward. It's not very confusing or anything. Level four, the courtyard. There's really nothing courtyardy about this map at all, other than there's an outdoor section. The courtyard takes a few tries to get fully familiar familiar with it. There's a lot of fiddling around with teleporters, which I have a feeling will become a thing in the later levels even more. This level has four key cards instead of the usual three, so a lot of it's running around fighting not caco demons and aliens with plasma guns to get to the key cards. You can find plenty of ammo in this map though, so it's not too bad overall. Doesn't no courtyard normally have like trees and shit? I don't know what makes this a courtyard. I really like the shotgun in this game. If you're close enough, it'll one hit kill the hit scanners and the plasma gunners. And the sound effects are real good on it too. I'm so glad Doom games give you a map, or else I'd be lost on a lot of these levels. I don't know how, but somehow in boomer shooters, I always get lost. Time to get lost!
Yeah, I wasn't about to turn around and see what that was. Time to get out of there. Level 5, System Purge. This one had these claustrophobic narrow corridors where if you had an enemy in front of you, you couldn't dodge his attack. You just had to kill him as fast as possible. They give you hit scanners, plasma gunners, the little red guys, but luckily no beholders. They kept them in the big rooms. Since everything looks the same in these corridors, I found myself breaking out the map a lot, which you gotta be careful about because you can be looking at the map and some asshole come up right behind you and start draining your health. I ended up finishing this stage in about six and a half minutes. It felt shorter than that to me, though. Maybe some of the levels were short in this game because of the Amiga's limitations. Who knows? Level six, the mines. Oh, God, the mines. Well, if you squint, it kind of looks like E1M3 from Doom, but you gotta really squint. Don't hurt yourself. There's a pit full of hit scanners and plasma gunners and a switch you need to hit to progress. And they're all very happy to see you. You hit the switch and it opens up a wall where there's two beholders sitting there waiting on you. Like I said, this game does this a lot. Puts enemies right in front of doors or in corners of hallways. Like when you go down into this pit with narrow corridors, there'll be enemies hiding in these little areas you can't see until you turn around. Apparently the original game had a feature where you could look behind you. And that's that's why the enemies are set up like that. That doesn't change that it's annoying. Steadily having to turn around to make sure nobody's behind you. And, and then there's this asshole. asshole. This smiley faced fuck is the Worm Sentinel. He's got two plasma guns that deal tons of damage and can take a shitload of hits. He's one of the most annoying enemies in the game because even the grenade launcher requires a lot of ammo to take him out. And half the time, you're trying to shoot at him from a corner, so then you have to worry about your grenades bouncing back at you and hurting you. These fuckers can go to hell, seriously. There's another one of those bastards waiting for you in the room with the red key card along with some red guys and some other stuff. And when you get to the exit, you're bombarded by a hallway slam full of beholders. And you're in a narrow hallway, so it's a little hard to dodge their projectiles. But if you got enough plasma gun ammo, you can take them out. The door will confuse you at first because it won't open, but it turns out there's switches you gotta hit to open it. Luckily, there's no sequence or anything. You just gotta hit them all. And then we're out of the mines. Jeez. Level 7, The Furnace. Fuck the furnace. The map doesn't seem like it's gonna be all that hard at first. In fact, the first half of it's pretty easy. In fact, if you snipe with the pulse rifle, you can get a lot of hits in without having to lose any health. I'm going to repeat that a lot because I did that a lot. Since the pulse rifle has 100% perfect accuracy no matter where you shoot, why wouldn't you snipe things with it? It's like if your car has a cup holder, why put your drink between your legs? I'm sorry, I guess I have cars on the brain. And it's all well and good until, uh-oh, Oh, there comes a worm sentinel and he's more than happy to drain you of all your ammo and health at least they give you a med kit because i guess they feel bad for you and now we got a beholder and a plasma gunner in this tight little corner and here comes a hit scanner right behind him nice and they're not done hiding enemies in the corners neither there's one right there and there's one on the other side shooting me Motherfucker. You see what I mean? You have to kind of pick which one you're gonna shoot at. You try to keep from getting a dick in your mouth and you get a dick in your ass. At some point you're gonna run out of holes. Let's say decide to go for your nose. I wonder if that's a fetish. I checked. Yes it is. A lot of really long hallways in the furnace. What the fuck? Ah, the old fake walls with enemies in them. Oh, the red guys are called pack hunters. Uh, I like red guy better. The furnace did have one cool part. There's this part where there's this small wall right here, and you can shoot grenades over it. Yeah, that's satisfying. The beholders really do become a bitch when you have low health, because one hit can kill you if you got like 30 health. Once we get into the furnace itself, guess who's behind door number two? Our old friend Smiley. The good news is your reward for defeating him is the rocket launcher, a weapon that is almost ruined by how much splash damage it has. Other than that, it's your BFG. It's okay. I would say the map is kind of confusing, and it was at first, but the more I play this game, the more I figure out the logic behind the way Team 17 made these levels. I adjust to the jank. But this is the first map I I could honestly call shit and i was happy as hell when it was over feel free to tag me on twitter and show me how you beat this level in two minutes i'll pretend to care level eight test arena gamma we're already halfway through with this game level eight has got a very special surprise for you and no it's not the barrage of plasma gunners you'll come to this switch that's surrounded by ammo lots of ammo and you may wonder why that is well in order to get to the exit you first have to fight 
Ed 209 and he's got lasers and a grenade launcher and wants to show them off for you. The grenades aren't much of a big deal even though they do a lot of damage. It's the laser you need to worry about. It's a really fast projectile and hard to dodge so if you can you need to get beside him or behind him and if you can't just get really good at dodging. That's the whole strategy. Just don't die. You can do that can't you? Can't you? See, that wasn't so hard. Level 9, surface zone. Hoo-wee! Surface... Surface zone is a doozy. Surface zone is a doozy. Its big thing is throwing a variety of enemies at you at one time, or sometimes several of the same one. And here's another worm sentinel more than happy to kick my ass. And after you kill him, you flip the switch to a door, and there's another one. Aw, oh, game, you're spoiling me. Fun, 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 fun. As I said, this level likes to hit you with barrages of enemies. When you get outside, there's a bunch of plasma gunners and hit scanners waiting on you. You got some on the mountain sniping you, then you see two more on platforms, and at that point you're like, okay, I get it. But then on the other side, there's worm sentinels on each side of this pillar. And when you get to the yellow key card, boom, three beholders and a swarm of the red guys. You know what? I'm actually surprised he killed me without blowing up that barrel. And here the game goes again. A teleporter, a fuck ton of ammo, and armor. Gosh, I wonder what's gonna happen when I go in there. I get gang banged by a barrage of enemies of all kinds. Hit scanners, shotgunners, plasma gunners, beholders, and a worm sentinel for good measure. The only way to stay alive is to keep moving and don't stop shooting. Your ammo be damned, don't stop shooting. And at some point, if you make it, you can grab the key card and get out of there. Level 10, training area. They really go overboard with the worm sentinels here, putting them in cramped spaces, sometimes two at a time with other enemies to boot? That's just cruel. I died on this map more than a few times, though sometimes it was from my own grenades. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> This level also introduces a new enemy, the, uh, uh, tree thing. It's basically the pain elemental of this game. It spawns these little critters that shoot at you. You shouldn't waste time trying to kill them, you should try to kill the tree thing. I actually didn't write many notes about this level. I guess it wasn't very interesting to me other than it being really hard. Well, that's all I've got for that one then. Level 11, admin block. Now this was a weird one. So this one's supposed to be like an office and it has these long, narrow hallways and the game has decided it's gonna put all the bad guys in the halls. How many enemies? All of them. I think I'm starting to understand this game. The way it increases the difficulty is just by adding more enemies. The more enemies, the better. Like Left 4 Dead levels of enemy hordes. Jeez. I bet a real Amiga slowed down to a snail's pace whenever this many enemies were going on at once. And let's put some worm sentinels in these little ass rooms while we're at it. In fact, let's put one worm sentinel right at the foot of a door so it can kill you to death. All right, game, I get it. You're gonna be nasty. You're gonna be a little dirty bitch, but you know what? I can be a bitch too. Yeah, suck on it. And back off it goes. Sorry, I really needed that. The map wasn't much of a big deal after that. Then it was just running around in a maze, hitting switches, and then going to the exit. I wouldn't say I had a very Brady Christmas with this one. Now, I know it's starting to sound like I don't like this game, but honestly, I do. In fact, I might play it some more later. It just gets pretty damn difficult on the later levels. But there is one level on this game I wish wasn't even on here, and is a piece of garbage. Level 12, The Pit. Oh! My god! The Pit is inexcusably bad. It's more like the shit pit. This is one of the laziest maps I've ever seen. It's literally just a corkscrew going down, down, down in a swirl, and the further you go, the more enemies there are. They start off with the weak ones, then work their way up to the hard ones. By the time you get to the hard ones, you've just about exhausted your ammo. And when you get down to the bottom, you get a key card. Guess where the door is? 
all the way back the hell up there. And they did you the favor of adding some worm sentinels to greet you on your way up. God, I hate these things. They're near as annoying as arch vials, and that's saying something. Worm sentinels can fuck off to whatever stupid planet they came from. Planet Zubliebaborg or whatever. Anyway, you go right back up the way you came and open the door at the top. Another key card. You know where that goes? Take one guess. In my pants! <laughs> All the way the fuck down there. And they gave you another whole batch of enemies to play with, including two worm sentinels together, and the party's not over at the door either. Once you get past the door, you've got to fight two of these tree things that spawn the little baby fuckers that shoot at you. And it takes four rocket launcher rounds to take one out, resilient little bitches. Needless to say, I did my share of dying on this part. Some of it from splash damage from the rocket launcher. It's splash damage reaches out pretty damn far and I hate it. That's why I hate using it. It just ends up killing me. Ugh. Thank God that's over. Worst map in the whole game. Worst map I've ever played in any FPS, honestly. That was fucking terrible. Like Babby's first Doom map. And you know what's interesting? I looked at the credits on this game. This map was made by a completely different person from everybody else. Whatever you do, do do not let that person near a level editor ever again. I sincerely hope they got better at that. Level 13, Strata Caster. Strata starts out in this small maze where you had to find all the switches to open a door to get you outside. Once you get out there, there's a bunch of crates and platforms to climb up on, and you have to find all four key cards in this area to open the door to the exit. Honestly, a pretty short map, though it took me a while because I kept dying, not because of bad enemy placement, not because worm sentinels are bullshit, not because shotgunners do a lot of damage when you're up close, but because I suck. That's all it boiled down to. Level 14, the reactor core. Now we haven't been following the story very closely, so let's catch up on that. So our protagonist has decided to destroy the facility and escape by ship. To do this, he has to extract the cooling system from the reactor core, and then it'll blow up in a couple hours. This one was a slog to get through. You have to find switches to raise a platform up to the exit, and most of them are hidden behind locked doors. It's a level that exists. I mean, you crawl in the water for a little while, that's something. Overall, pretty forgettable. In fact, I paused in the middle of playing it to check my phone. I was so uninterested. Also, I did a lot of running around wondering where I was supposed to go, as you can see by my elapsed time. Still not as bad as the freaking pit. Anything's better than the pit. Fuck the pit. The pit is shit. Level 15, the cooling tower. The cooling tower is a fantastic level. You've overloaded the reactor core, so now the base is about to blow up and your screen is shaking and shit, so you know it's serious. Makes you pumped up to finish the game. And you almost have. This is the next to last level. Near the end of the level, you get in an elevator which gives you some armor and you soon find out why. Holy shit, three worm sentinels, a tree thing, and a bunch of beholders. The aliens realize they're about to die and they wanna take you with them. You'll have to make really good use of cover and never stop moving. And the sooner you get those worm sentinels out of the way, the better. When you do, you get up on the lift and walk into the exit and say, whoo wee. It's okay, you can say hoo wee. You have my permission as a redneck. This is it, the final level, the command center. And what a final level it is. Your final boss is a huge alien named the Matriarch. She's got a rocket launcher that shoots two shots at a time. And on top of all that, there's tons of enemies spawning while you're trying to fight her, including a bunch of those smiley wormy boys. The game has had it up to here with you and has decided you're not going any further. But all you gotta do is unload some some rockets in the matriarch's face and if you do it enough at some point she's got to go down and when she does you grab the blue key card and get the hell out of there. I love the fact that right at the exit, they decided to put a red guy to ambush you there. Wouldn't that suck if the red guy killed you before you got to the exit? It's then that Captain John Reynolds gets aboard a spaceship, flies out of there, and lives happily ever after. Or does he? That's right, there's a sequel, but that's gonna have to wait for another time. And that's it! That's Alien Breed 3D! 
You won! The game only has 16 levels! I think there's a secret level, but I'll be damned if I know how to get to it. So that was Alien Breed 3D. Well, what did I think of it? Well, I think if I would have played the original Amiga version, I probably wouldn't have liked it very much. I highly appreciate this GZ Doom port. It gives this game some drastically needed modernization, and is overall the best way to play Alien Breed 3D. But should you play it? I think you should. Now, there were some maps I didn't like. There were some difficulty spikes I had trouble with. But overall, I had fun. I liked this game a lot. And I honestly think everybody should check it out. At least give it a try since it's free. I'll even put you a link in the description on where to get it. Overall, it was nice to play something different for a change. And this is the first FPS I've ever reviewed on the channel. If y'all want me to keep doing this, I will. Let me know. Well, that about wraps it up. If you like what you saw, consider becoming a patron. For $5, you can see the videos before anybody else does. You also get a Discord and your name on the board. You can also get your name on the board for just $1. Well, that's all I've got for you. This is Working Man Games. I'm Stuart K. Riley. See y'all.